Once again, it's the life, life, life. It's the Jackson on the beat. What's up everybody, it is April 22nd. Today is record store day. So my friend Dan and I are gonna go around Massachusetts, check out, let's see what the hype's about, especially considering the last four weeks of my life have been dedicated to making sure all stores have their records for record store day. So hope you enjoy this vlog. First stop, do it. This one's pretty tight though. This place is tight. There you go, right there. Hey everyone, so I'm back from my Record Store Day tour. It is the 10th anniversary of Record Store Day. I've been collecting records for uh, probably since like seventh grade. Where are my records at? I might clean this room today. It's extremely messy and I'm starting to get sick of it. I can't find anything. Oh. Now that I've got myself organized in honor of the 10th anniversary of Record Store Day, uh, I figured I would show you my purchases. So, the first place I went to was Vinyl Vault, which you'll see right there. Um, they're in Littleton, Mass. They're a small little record shop. I think family owned. I, first time going there today. 
but uh, they had an incredible collection. Um, they had t-shirts, LP, seven inches. I didn't look at any of the seven inches, kind of grew out of that. But I'll show you what I picked up. Uh, mainly all used, but uh, occasional new ones. And they're all in really good condition. Uh, decent pricing, some were a little pricey. Like Notorious B.I.G.'s Life After Death is like $120. So the first one that stood out to me was Sly and the Family Stone, which is a band that I got into probably in the last like two or three years. I've known about them for a while. They have some great hits, um, but really digging deep. And I would like to thank Childish Gambino with uh, Awaken My Love actually got me in the revival to go into some like funk bands, like Funkadelic, stuff like that. But I got Sly and the Family Stone. Let me get this centered right. Uh, stand. The lighting is a little bright. Next up, so I figure, you know, I love Frank Sinatra and I love like that orchestra style music with vocals. Tommy Dorsey and his orchestra with Frank Sinatra. Excited to hear some stuff on this. I don't know any of them, but you can't go wrong with Frank Sinatra. And then the last one, I went with the good, the bad, and the ugly. That was about $12. In all, I spent about $28 there. Three records, pretty good deal. And they're all very good condition, plastic sleeves. Highly recommend checking it out. Then we made our way to Brighton Music Hall where visited our friend Jake in Counterintuitive Records. Uh, check out their website, which will be in the link below. Uh, after that, we went to the world famous Felipe's, which I highly recommend going to. Best burrito place in the world, uh, it's Felipe's Taqueria on Brattle Street in Harvard Square. Just to die for. I'd melt in a burrito every, every time. It's so good. Just so good. But continuing on, we went to a place that I used to go to when I was in high school. Went to In Your Ear Records in Harvard Square, which has a ton of used records for great prices. A lot of them still in really good condition. Um, for me, it's the best place to dig for some just quality find. So we have the Boston Symphony Orchestra conducted by, and I'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong, Eric, Eric, <laughs> Eric Leinsdorf um, playing Prokofiev's Fifth Symphony, which is like my favorite one uh, as a tuba player, it kinda has to be. So uh, Boston Symphony Orchestra Prokofiev number five, Next, we have Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony with the Philadelphia Orchestra conducted by Eugene Ormandy. Ormandy. Here's that one. So this next one is another Prokofiev. It is done by the Czech Philharmonic Orchestra. Alexander Nevsky, which I believe was a movie. I could be very wrong. Uh, and then the last one I got it in your ear, Big Crits Catalactica. Uh, and then, finally, we went to Newberry Comics in Harvard Square, which is a very nice Newberry Comics. I went with Anderson Pax, woo, fallen, Malibu, which, awesome album. You can see the window in the background. I just found this, and I just kind of, you know... Pac-Man wins. Here, I'm just gonna take some time and talk about a few of the albums that I've picked, over, picked up over the last five years or so. And the first one, a hip hop classic, 1994 Nas Illmatic. Next up, if you don't know the story of this guy, you should get to know because he's amazing, Rodriguez. Uh, Cold Fact, which was his first album, Coming From Reality, which is my favorite one by him. These two records, amazing. The other one uh, I'd like to show you is by a band named Turnover, uh, Peripheral Vision, an in-your-ear pickup from when I was in high school. <laughs> concert for Bangladesh in, by George Harrison. Amazing live concert. Uh, had to get it, and I got it for $6, which is Another band, uh, was really into them in high school, still am, uh, but 59 Sound, 
such an authentic, real, just nostalgic sound um, by the Gaslight Anthem. Definitely check that out. I think I already talked about it earlier, but my love for Frank Sinatra. Classic, uh, Come Fly With Me. Just has a bunch of his good hits. Can't say enough about this album. Illinois by Sufjan Stevens. This one up at Rainbow Records in Delaware when I was at University of Delaware. Uh, the Fifth Dimension Portrait. Got this for a dollar. Think about music nowadays. You go on to iTunes and you spend 99 cents on a song. Picked up an entire album. 12 inches, whole inside, like for a dollar. The first record I ever bought um, was at, it is in Ithaca at Angry Mom Records. Uh, it's the 25th anniversary of Thriller picture disc. Um, nice collectible. Uh, also just awesome to spin. Band near and dear to myself. Transit, Listen and Forgive came out my junior year of high school. I pre-ordered the album and to this day it's just, you want to know what the Massachusetts lifestyle is about, you should listen to that album. Classic, I got this also in high school. It's seen some wear, but uh, Beatles Abbey Road. What can I say about the Beatles? They're amazing. Probably list this as one of my fav most favorited albums in my lifetime. I spent a lot of time reading the screenplay, studying lyricism, the beats, everything about it. I could talk for hours and hours about how inspiring this man is. But uh, Donald Glover, otherwise known as Childish Gambino's, because of the internet, it comes with a double disc LP and the entire screenplay of the album. And if you haven't, if you don't know about this, you gotta get to know it. Uh, he truly is um, like a master when it comes to creativity and just making amazing, amazing projects. Uh, I, Awaken My Love was beautiful and I thought Pharaoh's, going to Pharaoh, seeing him live just sold me as to like, he's one of the most dominant um, artists, I should say, because he's so multifaceted. But uh, yeah, that's all I got. Um, thank you for watching this video. I hope you are a record collector yourself or enjoy just music. Um, hopefully this inspires you maybe to go out, listen to some new music, new and old. Don't just listen to what's on the radio. Uh, make sure you drop a comment, tell me what you thought, a like, that would be amazing. And I will see you soon. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace!